Right, welcome back to the channel everyone. So this week's video, we're gonna be talking about how much it costs us to live in our van full time uh, on our monthly budget. There doesn't seem to be a lot of videos about this on YouTube at the minute. So hopefully this might be helpful to people that wanna do van life in the UK. So me and Bill have been living on the road for about a year now. We previously had a little T4 that we lived in for three months before we decided that we needed something bigger. We've been in this one about eight months now. We got this van about eight months ago and we've been living full time in this ever since. Right, so let's get into the breakdown of what we spend on our monthly budget. Right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the insurance. Uh, we're insured with Adrian Flux and it's a self-build camper van insurance. So that means that anything in the van is insured like electrics, uh, any appliances that we've put in here. Uh, so everything is insured um, under the self-built camper insurance. Uh, we spend £120 a month on our insurance, which is quite expensive, but because our age, we are only 24, um, it's a little bit more expensive than usual. Maybe if you're a bit older, you can get it a bit cheaper. I think we're both on that one as well, aren't we? Yeah, so we're both insured on that. So another expense for us is obviously fuel. We spend between 200 to 500 pounds a month on fuel. Um, it could be a lot less if we're in one place for a longer period of time. And obviously the fuel, the fuel prices have risen a lot recently, which is a major factor in why we spend more on fuel. So the next expense on our list is food shopping. So we spend about 240 pound a month minimum on our food shopping. Uh, that is shopping in Aldi, shopping in some of the cheaper supermarkets. Uh, we do tend to kind of prep our meals. We sort of plan out what we're going to have throughout the week and then we buy that and we probably do two shops a week. That is without alcohol as well. So obviously if you want to add your alcohol or whatever, other fun stuff you've got on your food shopping. <laughs> so obviously it's a lot easier for us because we have a little fridge in our van. In the little one we didn't have a fridge so we did have a cool box end and yeah. it was a bit harder for us. So that's just a rough cost. That's not definite. It could be more, could be less depending on certain things we have to buy but yeah that's just a general cost roughly 240 pounds a month on our shopping <laughs> next expense on the list is our pet food and insurance for willow she cost us about 12 pound a month to insure so it's not that expensive and probably 40 pound a month on her food bill so we feed her dry food and that is quite cheap and cost effective so all in all about 55 pounds a month on willow right so the next expense is our gas so we actually use our gas just for our cooker and our stove. Stove? So we actually just use our gas for our cooker and our oven. So we don't use that much really. So gas costs 50 pounds to refill our 13 kilogram bottle. So roughly about 10 pound a month, which is really, really cheap. Um, yeah, so we don't have to really fill that up a lot every six months and it lasts a long time. So the next expense, if you call it, but it's not, is water, obviously. We get our water for free. We get our water from petrol stations, friends and family houses, um, any taps that we can find, shops that we can ask to fill up, and obviously campsites as well. So you can refill your water at campsites. The campsites tend to, that we go for, tend to range between um, 10 to 15 pounds. We only really use campsites in the summer, but obviously this will vary in price depending on your preference of campsite. So campsites you can use in your um, monthly budget if you don't have a shower in your van. So if you don't have a shower and you need a shower, you probably will be using campsites a little bit more. But you can use apps like PitchUp to uh, filter a price so you can keep it cheap. So one of the reasons we actually got the bigger van was because we were spending so much money and time on campsites because we tend to want to have a shower like every two to three days when we're on the road. So that's one of the reasons that we did get a bigger van to cut down the cost at campsites. At the minute, we don't really use campsites at all. Um, we might do in the summer when we're meeting friends or uh, some of our friends are camping. But other than that, we can tend to stick to the free spots. So another expense for us is obviously our laundry. We spend between 25 to 40 pounds on laundry. We're recently using a self-service um, in Suffolk a lot. Uh, or you can get the uh, Revolution laundry stations at service stations, which do work out quite expensive, but if you're stuck, they're always there. Um, and obviously, when we're at home, we use our parents' house for laundry, which it works out free. So another expense will be uh, eating out and coffee. We tend to spend about 80 to 100 pound a month on just coffee and eating out. So if we're in town and we feel a bit hungry, we'll pop into a cafe or we'll go to a coffee shop. 
Uh, that, obviously that can vary, sometimes we don't go at all, sometimes we use them a lot more. So 80 to 100 pound on sort of coffee and eating out, that can also vary here and there. We don't really go to restaurants too much. Um, it's more pubs and little coffee shops and running in if we're hungry on the road and need lunch. So lastly is our heating. So obviously we've got a diesel heater and we've plumbed that into our main diesel tank. So we don't really see the cost come out that much, but I think it's roughly about 10 to 15 pound a week. So say 40, 50 pound a month on our heating. And obviously that is just using the winter. So we don't use that in the summer. So it's just for probably four months of the year that we're actually using the heating. That pretty much covers all of our expenses. Um, obviously that's not including our phone bills and other stuff that we've got our monthly payments on, like Spotify or Netflix. So that's just our essentials of what we, what we need to survive really living on the road. So that comes to a total of around 800 to a thousand pound a month and that can vary two three hundred pound either way uh, so that's just our cost of living in a van this might not be everyone's sort of budget some people spend a lot more some people do spend a lot less so we hope that helped some of you who are thinking about doing it so ways that we can cut cut costs would be obviously driving less which we plan to do in the future hopefully we can be full time on the road and bill won't be stuck to one place and obviously uh, we mentioned before meal prepping, so cooking up your ingredients that you buy from the shop which will last you all week, save space and save money. So now we're going to talk about the pros and cons of living in a van, in our opinion. So some of the pros of living in a van, obviously there's a lot of pros. The first one is it's a lot cheaper than renting a house or a mortgage. You don't have to pay council tax so you're saving a lot of money there on your monthly budget so that's one of the pros obviously you can travel where you want you can take your house uh, to wherever you go and you get beautiful scenes every day another pro would be you don't have to book hotels when you're going away so if you're going to a night out or you're going for a weekend away somewhere with your mates or something you haven't got to book a place to stay so that's another positive of living in a van Another positive of living in a van is free electric as our electric is powered through solar and also and also when we drive. So the freedom of being not tied down to anywhere, so being able to wake up wherever you want any day, having somewhere different to stay every night, yeah, that's another pro. <laughs> <laughs> another pro would be having everything you own with you at all times, so if you're at the beach and you decide that you want to get changed, you can literally just go back to the van and you've got your entire wardrobe. Right, now let's talk about the cons of living in a van. Been in a small space, so it takes a bit of getting used to if you're coming from a house or something bigger to adjust to living in a tiny place, especially if there's two of you. So yeah, that's just another thing to think about. A con of van life would be emptying the toilet. I'm really lucky and Bill does that for me. My job. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure I'll have to do it at one point and it is obviously a really big difference from a house because you just pull the chain and your stuff goes away but you obviously have to deal with it yourself so you can get different types of toilets we've got a cassette toilet you can get composting toilets and if you get a bigger cassette toilet you will have to empty your toilet less frequently uh, another con of living in a van uh, is being mindful of our waste and water all the time so we've always got to be watching how much water we're using and how much waste we're sort of using and getting rid of so we've got a 100 litre tank, so that's quite a big tank really, and that lasts us five days. Um, but if you have got a smaller tank, you're gonna have to think about where you're refilling all the time, uh, how much water you're using if you've got a shower, and how long it's gonna last you. Another con of van life is getting bibbed, which we've experienced a lot recently. Obviously, because you're staying in um, public car parks, if you choose to do more the wild camping side of it, you are in a public space, you're gonna get boy racers, you're gonna get people that come up to the van and do all sorts of strange things but it's something that you definitely get used to as long as you feel safe in the area then it's absolutely fine it's just something you've got to get used to we're pretty used to it now aren't we yeah. um, it's, it was hard to adjust at first but it's just part of it the last con on our list is finding spots to sleep so obviously this can be a bit of a pain in the ass trying to find somewhere to stay every night there is apps you can use like park for night um, but sometimes they are crowded especially in the summer so it's good to have a few little spots of your own every night trying to find somewhere different, especially if you're, if you're working and you finish your work and you're, you're trying to find somewhere and sometimes it doesn't work out the best so you might have to be driving around for longer than you want. 
Yeah, I think like when you go to spots and you've got your heart set on the spot and you turn up and it's not great and you have to drive again, yeah. it turns into like hours of driving. So. Yeah, so a lot of driving involved. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that pretty much rounds up everything for the video. Um, Try to cover as much as you can covering our costs. If you're thinking of doing van life, we hope it helped out a lot. If you have any questions regarding this video or anything else, leave them below. And also let us know what video you want to see us do next because we've always struggled with that. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.